Good morning! Halika! Magkapi tayo! Welcome to the Morning Coffee with Father Jerry. <clears throat> Our text for today is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his Son and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does, does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that, that what they have done has been done in the, la, in the sight of God. Thus far is the reading for today's Gospel Reflection. What is it for us? What is God's message to us today through these texts? In fact, this is one of my favorite texts ever. So with Jesus, the love of God can never be doubted anymore. It is a love incarnated that can be seen, can be heard, and can be felt. It is because of this that Jesus will be, for all times and places, an icon of God's love made concrete. When we talk or speak of incarnate or incarnation, it simply means God becoming man. That's the meaning of the term incarnate or incarnation. God, who enjoys life in heaven, is not just contented being alone, living in that perfect life. He comes down to us, into the level of men, according to human condition and according to human situation. No ifs, no buts. And that is God, the incarnate God, God becoming man. And that's the meaning of incarnation. Okay. Now, think about this. Jesus became man, sabi natin, incarnation, like us, if he is God's manifestation of love for the world, then we bear in each one of us an imprint of God's love. Every person Every image of a person or every human person has an image or imprint of God in each one of us. Okay, So we too are God's image and likeness of love for the world and for each one of us. The coming of Jesus reminds us of who we are, our real identity. Our true vocation is to spread God's love to the whole world. 
Can you feel it? God created the world for good. For good. But the created beings abused, misused, or overused the created world by God. And instead of God punishing these created beings who mis misused and abused the world, instead of God punishing us, hindi niya ginawa. Instead of punishing us or condemning us or condemning the world, He sends His Son into the world. Take note, not to condemn the world, not to punish the world, but to save the world through His love. And that is God. Okay? Because God so loved the world. Okay? Sige. We continue. Greater love is manifested in the cost and sacrifice of the giver, and that is God. True lovers hold nothing back, but give the best that can be offered to their beloved ones, including all they possess, even their very own lives. God proved His love to each and every one of us by giving us the best He had to offer His only Son, who freely offered up His life for our sake as the atoning sacrifice for our sins and the sin of the world. Our challenge. Try to imagine the story of Abraham. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, prefigures the perfect offering and sacrifice of God's beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sent to the world to save us. This passage in the Gospel of John tells us of the great breath and will of God's love, not an excluding love for just a few or for a single nation, but a redemptive love that embraces the whole world. You know, sabi natin, no ifs, no buts. It's unconditional. And personal love for each and every individual whom God has created in His own image and likeness. Take that in the book of, you can find that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. God is the eternal Father of love who cannot rest until His wandering children have returned home to Him. As Saint Augustine of Hippo, one of the greatest fathers of the church, said, and I quote, God loves each one of us as if there were only one of us to love. Ganda no? God loves each one of us as if there were only one of us to be loved. I like that. God gives us the freedom to choose whom and what we will love. Okay? Tuloy natin. So Jesus shows us the paradox of love and judgment. We can love the darkness of sin and unbelief or we can love the light of God's love, truth, goodness, and beauty. If our love is guided by what is true and good and beautiful, then we will choose for God and love Him above all else. What we love shows what we prefer and value the most. Do you love God above all else? Does He take does He take first place in your life? Or is He the number one priority in our lives today? In our lives, in our thoughts, in our afflictions, in our actions, even in our dreams. Is God still our number one priority in life? 
today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your love is better than light itself. May your love consume and transform my heart with all of its yearnings, aspirations, fears, hurts, and concerns, that I may freely desire you above all else and love all others generously for your sake and for your glory. Make me to love what you love, desire what you desire, and give generously as you have been so generous towards me and towards all of us, including our witnesses. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so mga kapatid, paano to? Don't forget to drink your coffee. Magandang buhay ulit and see you tomorrow.